Konnichiwa, do they speak Japanese, these spoilers? Yeah, uh, arigato, this is it. Yeah, this is fucking, this is it, we're in Japan. Oh man, if somebody actually comes towards us here, I literally... <laughs> we actually fit! <laughs> what the... <laughs> oh, it's just a full fucking BRZ. We're back. Hi. Oh wow. <laughs> Japan? Oh, we're going to Sakoka. Listen to the sound of this one. How much can three boys do in Japan in two and a half weeks? Yeah, let's see. In 2016, we went to Japan with somebody else's plan that fell apart. So this time we decided that we were going to go back and have our own plan. The only thing that was set in stone on the list was go to 86 festival which was on the third day. That and collect our van. And then we could have got a bus into Osaka and a train, but we decided now nah, we'll get on a catamaran boat. Um, we thought this was going to be 10 minutes. Yeah, it's the most un Irish place an Irish man could be. We are lost here too. We just got a boat yeah. and now we're on a train. Oh, there is our boat. Fukuatari. That's where we have to go to. And we got a boat. We got a plane, we got a boat. And we got a bus. We got a bus, we got a subway, and now we're getting a boat train. Traveling for 24 hours. Yeah, we're yep. still going. We're still going. We still have to go and get a vehicle yeah. that we purchased. Wait to see what it is. Somebody's come to collect this in a Daihatsu. Wow. All right. The the tiredness just evaporated. I mean, we all we wanted to see was tuning shops and stuff, and we were hoping that we'd probably see that the next day. But to collect the Alphard, we were catapulted into like one of the coolest places ever. It was such a nice way to kickstart the trip. We are up in the mountains outside of Okiyama and we're at Heart Up World <laughs> with the guys. And we've just collected our car that we bought. We got this Toyota Alphard. Yeah. And we were told to pick it up here. So these guys picked us up in the train station. We've been yeah. traveling all day. We had no idea where we were and going. There, and now we're at this Heart World. Yeah. And there's so much cool stuff. There's Look at this. So much cool stuff. <laughs> 
Your man's an absolute legend. He's just fucking very excited that we're excited. They're laughing that we're filming everything. A really nice tuning shop, and these guys were just blown away by the fact that we were there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we went from sitting on a train yeah, in silence <laughs> and now we're just surrounded by the coolest shit ever. Wow. Type X. We went from zero to a thousand. I was so tired like 10 minutes ago. And now we're just like... Yeah, so nice. Very cool. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at this. This is really cool. The old uh, 180 thing. Oh, old sicker. Yeah, very yeah, old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Midnight loitering, urine leakage runaway. Wow, all right. So check this pro box. They've actually started racing these at Sakuba, and they have a one make pro box race cup, and uh, it's just for fun. Ah. Okay. This is the fastest pro box around Sakuba. Look at the custom hard up world brides. Oh man, it's such a mad machine. Oh. What engine is in these then? Totally my, unfamiliar. My, my MV. Okay, alright. The same as in the Vitz, oh, yeah, 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 Vitz yeah, engine. Yeah, okay. That's just, just great. Like. Very cool. Yeah. Japan Pro Box Exceed Championship. <laughs> How many years? Uh, you do this? Uh, two, uh, three. Three years, three. yeah, yeah, yeah. The frog on the fucking... Where is he poisonous? I'm not sure. Oh, you're gonna die. Mm. The completely standard version of the car that he races. There's a Mitsubishi Mingitopo on SSR. There's a weird yoke making noise in the bush over there. There's a really nice FD. Oh. Fucking hell, man, my fucking face. That's an FC in there as well, look. I don't know if anyone's actually going to really comprehend how like we were just slogging a massive journey and then the first stop is fucking literally piece. the best fucking yeah. thing ever. Interesting. Look at him. Oh no, there's a bigger one than that, Neil. Where? He went in past him. I hope they don't jump out at you. Konnichiwa, do they speak Japanese, these spoilers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, arigato, spiderobato. A great start to a trip. Yeah, this uh, just says me lady on it, look. <laughs> me lady. Here's the cresta with just a, a family in it. They're just having a good time. This is it. It's just fucking. This is it, we're in Japan. Yeah, you get that, you know, feeling. Like, it's not real. It's like you're waiting to, to wake up any minute, like.
<laughs> no, we just, I just, we just had to leave because uh, uh, we were getting sucked in. The lads were just didn't. They were kind of just so fucking excited about us being there. Yeah. There's not many foreigners probably come up this neck of the woods. I don't even know where we are really. No, but we'll. Yeah. We literally have to drive back down the road we came up on the train. So we were supposed to save for beers, but we got to go meet Steve and give him the money for our new machine. So just have to hit the road. Our friend Steve, he sold us the El Grand in the last video and he was nice enough to hook us up with an Alphard this time. So 19 days with a van. We'd probably live in the van sometimes as well if we could. We were just going to wing it and kind of dirtbag our way up across Japan. Nah, my hand. Yeah, your hand. Oh, nice. Very important. What's that? What is it? Chicken toy. That's great. Nice, you know, Drift Tengoku. It's got lots of really, really nice stuff on it. So, we are going to purchase these without even thinking. It's great that you can uh, just walk in, walk into the L Family Mart and buy the latest episode of Drift Tengoku. We're driving around like we know exactly where we're going. We're, we're just blending in. And we don't actually know where we're going. We haven't a clue where we're going. I don't know where this road goes. We've never been on this road before. I don't know anyone who's been on this road before. I don't know anyone on this road. Steve was nice enough to hook us up with good aircon. And this thing is a comfy machine. Wow. Holy shit, monsters, aren't they? For fuck's sake. I noticed they have a little shower button on them that presses and it shoots water up into your arse but we're going to see what happens when you just pretend that your arse is sitting on it by just pressing on the sensor so you press the <laughs> shower button and this little nozzle comes out and it hits you <laughs> <laughs> Ceiling. Yeah, you just dry yourself off. You dry off the ceiling, of course, and you're uh, you're good to go. The um, aircon is broke, so they gave us this, which is another thing that blows air around, but just blows the air around in the room. That doesn't work. That doesn't work, and we are melted. We woke up, little hangover, because we were drinking all night, we were kind of excited. We thought we'd go to bed early, but it didn't happen. We were in Japan, we had a fucking Alphard, we were, we were living the good life. Get some free stickers. Next day, went to get breakfast, rolled down the street, and out of nowhere, this shop called ING, I think, I think it was like after franchising Liberty Walk, and we just turned the corner and there was just a C10 skyline. And straight away, again, just like the guys last night with Heart Up World, super hospitable, just came out, they were very excited to meet us. One of the nicest cars I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> it's so good. Man, what a mean looking car.
free 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 t-shirts and bags and bags. bags. This guy's an absolute legend. He looks yeah. like some gangster. Wow, another fucking experience. Yeah, we <laughs> like... just literally drove past this place in Himeji. Where's Himeji? Yeah. They have a nice castle here. He put one of the juice box stickers on his C10. I couldn't believe it. Like, it was this, this incredible car. We don't know if our, uh, our Alfa is petrol or diesel. And we didn't know where the petrol flap was. That guy's freaking out because he wants to pour the petrol and we're just getting out to see if it's petrol or diesel. Ah, oh. petrol. So in Ireland, our petrol is green. And then the diesel is black. And over here, you're high-fiving the thing. Ah. Payment. Go. Cash. Yeah. So we're using Google Translate here. Do you have a do you have the following card? I guess if you have a card, please. No. Thousand? Yeah. Fifty liars. Well it takes fifty liars. Okay, fine. Do we do this much? Yeah, because we split a thousand each. Yeah. Let's go in there. I start feeling, brother. That's fun. That's a fucking ordeal. Sure, like we should have just read this in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So now we're going back to the Himeji up garage where we uh, pimped the El Grand two years ago. And we're just gonna have a little look before we head out of Himeji and hit the road. We're back. We're back at up garage. We're back at up garage. The exact same up garage where you weren't there the last time, where me well, and you we were here and, uh, pimped the car. Yes. We were going to buy wheels for the Alphard, but we actually have wet sport jokers. The design shows a marked improvement, and we have a cool lip kit already. Okay, buff this. There was a very similar machine to this here the last time. What the? There's heaters in the windscreen, look, that'll heat up your blades. Oh, wow. Look at the amount of air freshness. See, this is funny because this is literally just on the side of a road. Yeah. We're just basically down the side of a street somewhere, and this is here. Yeah. And that's perfectly normal. It's, it's perfectly normal it's over here. Like we went looking for these cars. He's a fac factory, but no O. Look, factory. Upgraded uh, calipers and everything on it. Factory. So I guess this is the shit that people are modifying a lot more in Japan now as opposed to S14s and S13s and stuff because that stuff isn't really around. This is kind of affordable. Would you on fucking drift now? It was KTS S13 coilovers for about 180 euro. Yeah, I know everybody does a an up garage video where they come in here and have a look around so we'll just do a little small one and look at what's in this one in Himeji there's just stuff everywhere fuck they repack everything in here to make it look like it's kind of new for you to purchase again you sell that for about 150 euro in Ireland and it is about 84 euro I'm gonna buy this Nardi because it's nice so is that 32 or two of them how would you describe this place, Ruben, to someone that hasn't been here? Yeah, it's like a toy store selling second-hand toys. For adults. Like the best toys you wanted when you were growing up. This is just a random carbon shop race. That's it. Probably a harness bar, is it? Yeah, yeah. Just a box of random old remotes. Just for different audio systems over the years. And, uh... Maybe someone might find something they're looking for in here, but uh, it's pretty funny. Say from my very first trip to now, how different the, the contents inside in the up garage are. Like, um, the first time I went, say, I was absolutely spoiled for choice. Um, I guess that's because of the internet and uh, 
Kruber and online shopping and stuff, you know, you could even see like as you're leaving the up garage, there's a, like a, a stockpile bin sort of section where that's all the online stuff has been actually picked and is ready to head out the door. And that's the stuff that you want, you know, it was, there's still a lot of stuff you can, you can take from there, but it just, I didn't feel as, as spoiled for choice as I was the, say the very first time I went like, you know. Cool, right? We made a purchase. And it's just a, a tin roof shed full of cool wheels. Speed stars, they're definitely like one of the first ones ever. Wheels, wheels, wheels. <laughs> we have any size you want. Come on down to Wheels Stop. <laughs> wheel Stop in Himeji. Himeji Wheel Stop. Come on down, get your time. <laughs> it's only 300 quid. Oh, it's just a full fucking BRZ. Wow. Nice. There's no VTEC inside on this anymore. Alright, we've seen Himeji again. Himeji, Himeji. There's less awesome wheels here. Yeah, there is. That's because of Kruber. Because now everything is online and you can just take it. Tiny VSXXs. This looks like a, an orange potato. Out in the wild, we spotted a GTR, an R32 GTR on the road. Just seeing a car in the wild, like the 86 we seen the first time, seeing something in Japan, we were like kids in the Alpha Art trying to chase down this GTR just to get a picture of it and creeping this old man out. And you just see these cars that we obsess over and they're cool and all in Ireland or America or Europe or wherever, but when you see them on their home soil, it's just like. straight back into the B roads. So we decided no tolls, no highways, and uh, yeah, we just started driving our way through rice fields, and we realized the Alphard is actually quite big and not really suited to where the little key trucks would usually be. 2.4 meters. Oh man, if somebody actually comes towards us here, I literally... <laughs> we actually fit. What the fuck? What? <laughs> we are, these are definitely not roads for this machine. I think we enjoy doing this more than anything else, literally getting lost on tiny roads. Continue straight. Deja vu ruins. This the place where we parked before, right? Deja vu, right? That's the best part of the trip, I think, for all of us, is getting lost on B roads and just trying to, that, that's where you see all sorts of stuff. So we visited some of the shops that we'd already been to, because Flip was with us this time, he hadn't seen some of the shops and uh, we thought we couldn't miss up an opportunity, so we went to the places like Endless.
are are keeping with the times and they obviously have to make money and the 35 is the hot car at the minute so when you get there it's literally they're all stacked up you get to see the literally the best of the best stuff on 35s <laughs> Car. Some fucking absolutely incredible machines. We just drove through a bamboo forest and now we're bollocks. Like on the B roads, you see all sorts of stuff. Straight away, we were starting to see like abandoned eight sixes and cool RX sevens in people's gardens. It was a, uh, it's always the best way to explore the countryside. Trunal. Oh, Trunal. just okay, just two, two of them. Of them. Just some abandoned eight sixes. Yeah. Well, not really abandoned, but. If I had to have a living, it would be two door. Just in the absolute wild. We said we, it'd be rude not to stop in some of these shops on our way to Osaka. Uh, went to Impulse. They were actually packing up because 86 Festival was the next day. They let us have a little look around. Probably one of the most prestigious 86 shops in Japan. They have carbon everything. They make carbon doors, carbon roofs full nut and bolt restorations that probably cost 40, 50,000 euros. So we're in the middle of nowhere. Again. In an up we're garage. Up garage. Go be up garage. Ah, ah, ah Greddy Suzuki. Oh. And the boys never got anywhere because we're so sidetracked by absolutely everything. <laughs> I mean, straight away again, you're hit with the infrastructure of driving into Osaka again, just the roads, the bridges. In Ireland, we don't have that kind of infrastructure. We only got like highways linking some of the major cities in like the last 10 years. So, you know, Ireland, I'm not going to diss the country, but it is pretty backwards when you go to a place like Japan and you see the level of infrastructure that's there. There's bridges over bridges and just to try to get the sheer scale of some of the cities like Osaka and stuff is 
completely overwhelming. Global Auto, from spending a lot of time with Ruben, especially he never shuts up about Global Auto. So a place that I really wanted to go back to, uh, a place that blew my mind, somewhere that I've always obsessed over, a car shop for years and years over the internet, every day looking at Global Auto. We've been there before and it just absolutely blew the socks off. It's just the quality of cars there was unbelievable. So we said we had to go back there and Flip had to witness this. Again, just this place on the side of the road, it's insane, like just R34s, NSXs, Supras, like GTRs, the best cars in the world are just casually on the side of the road across from like a takeaway, it's, I don't know, insane, like. That's one of the best looking cars I've ever seen in my entire life. It's perfect, it's just, and this is also perfect. Yeah. I wish the fence was not here. It's just incredible that here's just the main road, and then here over the fence is just it's the greatest collection. It's like your dream garage in a video game. Yeah. Like, it's right here. I wouldn't know what to drive first. How do these lads just work and do this all the time and go, ah? Yeah, today you have to valid this, ah, bollocks, really. It's so hard to comprehend this stuff. And only for we've made this video again, your brain gets to a point where it can only take in so much stuff that it starts just forgetting stuff. I actually remember getting there and I was probably a little bit rude because when I first arrived i kind of there's a little chain link fence and I, I jumped the fence and the lads were like flip you have to come back like you, you know and i know what the etiquette and stuff and and you know how to act with the people there and stuff and be polite and, and whatever but i was just buzzing and i i just jumped this little fence to get in to see the stuff even though i could see it i just had to be in there and uh yeah, the lads said, yeah, you need to come back. Like, let's like break the ice with the lads because, you know, they're all staring over, kind of wondering, you know. He's finished now, he has his car. This is the most Japanese thing ever. And he pulls the 34 out. We were a little nervous at uh, Global. It felt like the mood there was a little different to it when we were there in 2016 because there's a lot more theft in Japan now and there's a lot more uh, value put on these cars. They've rocketed out of control in the, like, just in the last three years. These cars were like 30 grand, 40 grand in 2016 and now they're 200 grand, like it's insane. So there must have been a couple of million euros worth of stock just sitting on the street. But, uh... Yeah, it took a few minutes, they were a little bit standoffish and uh, we finally got chanting and yeah, then we got to explore and everything was nice and I've probably never seen a greater collection of cars in one place ever, like ever, even the stuff like that's being prepared that's not fit for viewing to the lad's standards is absolutely amazing. Yeah, global is amazing. What what can we say? We we tippy toed our way around the cars nervously, but then we struck up a conversation with uh, one of the main guys that works there. Oh wow! <laughs> yep. Wow. Well, okay. That's still. It still does it crazy. Sense. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, we eventually got talking to one of the head mechanics at Global Auto, and. I wanted to kind of poke him and see how they felt about all the GTRs, the, the, the crazy prices of GTRs and Skylines and Supers and all that type of stuff, all their, their bread and butter, what they sell and what they restore, 
how do they feel about it because of the influence of foreigners and we're taking all their cars and especially since the American market has opened up it's just the prices have gone through the roof. So, yeah. Are you worried to be left? Google, Google Translate. Translate. We're having a Google Translate attack. He basically told us that he was kind of happy that the cars were leaving Japan because new countries are developing new parts where Japan has actually forgotten about these cars and it's not really developing new stuff anymore so it was interesting to hear that. He also said that the parts aren't being, they're hard to find because Westerners are taking all the parts out of Japan so they're having a hard time restoring cars in Global Auto because they don't have, they don't have the resources anymore so it was, uh, it was fascinating to be honest. Is that a fucking, you for eating your cereal out of her? Some sort of turbo or something. <laughs> The place just speaks for itself, it's just, it's every car you could ever want and more and everything is perfect, it's just, uh, I don't know. That was great. That was a, that was a nice experience and a good insight. Cause good insight. Actually, uh, really yeah. Yeah. Because all of this stuff is probably going to end up either in America or the UK or the Middle East someday. It's sad but it's nice, but it's sad. It's good to see it. And we're just here to... It's probably the best collection of skylines anywhere in the world maybe, yeah, right now. at the one time yeah. and we're just three morons from Ireland I love cars you have to remember I haven't been here oh yeah this you my first time and this is oh yeah we've been here like once. yeah we've been here like <laughs> so many times once before I think the second time I ever met you you showed me the website probably yeah you're like this every, fucking day, every, every day second, like, I don't know why it looks like a dream garage on the internet and it's it's everything and more in person so just nice to go there again I love Global Auto. Someday, my goal is to buy a GTR from Global Auto. Even though they've tripled in price, but someday. You made, bing, you made this bing, bing. Oh shit. I love how these people just cycle past and they don't give a, they don't give a shit about GTRs. They never look to see fuck about Global Auto. Just look at that, like across just some generic road next to just some little little takeaway. Yeah. Is the best lineup of cars. Best lineup of super Japanese cars. Look at that, like, that is a stunning sight. What are you gonna get? Oh, no. Oh, Obviously, cost I'm gonna get a fucking cost boffy. Cost boffy. Just of all the things to be on. Oh my fucking god! Japan! Japan! Oh, we're gonna go past Global we're Auto. To drive past Global Auto behind this. Behind the GTR. Global Auto. GTRs. There's Global Auto there. Oh, they put up net. Yeah. What do we do? We drove around Osaka for the next few hours, excited, thinking we'd see civics and all sorts of stuff. So now we're trying to. We're in Osaka and we're trying to be cool and see some stuff. So we're gonna to go to a parking place. We came here looking for cool Hondas and Skylines and stuff. We got what we're looking for. Welcome to the Feet Multiple in Osaka. Everything. Like, there's an Altesa now that uh, hasn't done rings. Yeah, we realised that after like 9 o'clock you can't really book anywhere to stay so our second night was in the Alphard. We went to Zumiatsu PA and just, uh, yeah, we crashed in the van. I'm not a big, massive 86 enthusiast, but just to be there and experience this was 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 just something on another level. Mm -hmm. 